What's up, family? Hey, I want to have a real heart to heart today. Uh, we're entering into a new season. And it is vital that we understand our role. It is crucial that we embrace our role. We can't allow our insecurities, we can't allow our arrogance, any of those things to throw us off track in this season that we're in. And understand we all have insecurities. There's not one of us that don't have some type of insecurity. Not one of us. I have them. Several of them. So there's not one of us that don't have some type of insecurity. Because there's not one of us that's perfect. We all have some type of issue. I'll share a couple of stories. To bring this point home. Years ago, just newly married. And um, this young lady, about 20 something years ago. This young lady was like, man, everybody's telling me, you know, we're upstairs in, in the townhouse and we're getting ready to go to bed. And she's like, man, everybody keeps telling me who you are and what you do and what you're supposed to be doing. And she's like, who am I? Where, where do I fit in it? And, you know, and she didn't understand her role. She didn't understand wh what role she played in my life in regards to all the things all these people were telling her, all these older women were telling her that who I was, what I was supposed to be doing. And so I said, okay, you know what? Let's pray about that. Let's ask God. I said, God deals with me a lot in dreams. Maybe he'll deal with you in a dream. Maybe he'll show you a dream. He'll give you a dream. So let's pray about it and see what happens. I said, because everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a role. So I prayed for it that night. We prayed together, but I prayed for her that night that her role, her purpose would be revealed to her. <clears throat> we went to bed. She had a dream. And she woke up in the morning. And she was in a bad mood. <laughs> Which wasn't a surprise, you know, but she was in a bad mood. And um asked her soup. What's going on? What you dream about? I mean, did you have any dreams? And she was like, yeah. And, she, and I just, that was a trigger word, right? <laughs> she was like, yeah. And she was like, and I don't understand it. And what do do? And it's all about you. And da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, what'd you dream? And I was like, it ain't my fault you had a dream. What'd you dream, you know? And so she dreamed that we're just left this, catastrophic event something completely devastating happened she doesn't remember what it was she couldn't remember what it was and there were like millions of people following me and i was leading us to where we we're supposed to go and we had i had family members in this group she had family members in this group and they were wanting to take shortcuts, like, why do we have to go that way? And this doesn't make sense. And, you know, just very argumentative and just, how come we can't go that way? That way's faster than it. And it's just, you guys been around families. You guys know how it is, you know, and it's always family that, you know, that wants to challenge you. And at nighttime, we would rest. And I would just lay my head on her, on her lap, on her legs. And I'd just be looking up at her and the stars and just frustrated, just ready to give up and just, you know, just, I'm done. Forget these people. Everybody think they know what they're supposed to do. Everybody think they know where they're supposed to go. Let them go. You know, come on, me, you, and our small inner circle, we could go. We could get up tonight and we could just leave these people here. They could figure it out. They could go, go whatever way they want to go. And she's just rubbing my head top of my head just letting me know that we couldn't do that you know I couldn't do that we couldn't do that we couldn't just abandon the people like that and so 
she would talk me down off the edge every night, you know. But every night, I would come back and saying things like, "Man, I'm so sick of these freaking people. Everybody knows everything, and do do do, you know." And she would listen to me vent, and she stroking my head and just talk me off the edge again. There's a group of people that decide they're gonna go shortcut. And as we're going, we're up on a hill. I mean, we're going up on a steep incline and we're going towards the mountaintop. And I'm telling everybody, we have to stay on this path. We have to stay on this path. We can't deviate. We cannot deviate. We have to stay on this path. But everybody's getting frustrated. Not everybody, but small groups of people are getting frustrated. And they're getting riled up because I have a cousin that's talking. You know, and then she has a brother that's talking, you know, and getting all the people riled up. So small group of people, they decide the next morning, they're going to take the shortcut. And it looks like an easy route. It looks like a practical route, you know. But I knew that we were on this path and we had to stay on this path and we couldn't deviate from this path. They went that way, the route they took. And they ran into quicksand. It, it, it was like quicksand. And they were stuck. And the ground was swallowing them up. And they're looking up at us. And we're able to look down to them. We could hear their screams and cries. But there was no way for us to get down there fast enough to help them. And so they perished. We kept moving. She said the dream ended with us being able to look and see the promised land. We could see it. We're that close to it now. And that's when the dream ended. And I and the people she said the people were getting excited because they could see where we're going. And why we had to go this route. They understood that now. And she was, I was like, well, what are you mad about? I mean, that's a great dream. And she's like, that's all you, and what do you do, you know, that's all about you, and everybody's, you know, talking about you're a great leader, and da-da-da. And I was like, are you serious? I said, look, we would have never made it there had it not been for you. I would have given up. I would have bailed on the people. I would have, like, bumped these people. They figured on there. I'm sick and tired of it. I said, every night of this journey, I came and I talked to you, and had you agreed with me and we bailed, none of these people would have made it here. I said, all of these people made it here because of you. Yes, I'm the face that they see, but behind the scenes, it was you that was encouraging me. It was you that was listening to me. It was you that, were pull that was pulling me down off the edge of the mountains, and, you know, because I'm ready to bail on the people. I said, so it was you. She didn't want to receive that. Know your place. Know your role. Stay in your lane. We all have our own individualized journey, path that we have to walk. You can't walk somebody else's path and succeed and reach your full potential. Years later, different young lady, And married to another young lady at this time. And I dreamed that we were being attacked by this large group. And we had an army. I had an army with me. And we were in a, um, this big field. And we saw this Victorian home, style home. And so we grabbed, gathered the generals together and we talked to say, hey, our best bet is to go inside that home, make that our command post, make that our medical facility, and to store our ammo because it's getting ready to downpour. And we got to get our ammo. We got to get all of our stuff out of the weather. Under the circumstances, that was the best situation to have the command post, the medical facility, and the storage of all of our ammo and weapons. 
under other circumstances, that's not smart or intelligent to have all that in one place. I understand that. But in this dream, under the circumstances, the storm was coming. We had to do this. And we knew that this is when the group was going to attack, was during the storm. And so I tell my wife, your job is to check and certify everybody coming into this facility. I need you to do that. Everybody coming in and out, they got to go through you. You're the gatekeeper. The command post is upstairs. And there's a window. And we can see out over the battlefield. The battle's already started. And behind us, some trees is where they're camped up at. And they kept some people back. And they're just steadily sending people at a time to wear our guys out. And so, I mean, the generals conclude that we need to outflank them. And so we send a group around this way, and we send another group around this way, you know. And we're going to surround the enemy that's on the outside. We have a small group that's down on the front lines fighting, but we're getting ready to come from the, the outside and surround them. And so... This is the plan, and we're just watching everything unfold. My wife gets frustrated. She doesn't like her job, doesn't like her responsibility, thinks it's a job anybody could do. She goes out to the fight. General tells me, hey, your wife's on the battlefield. I look where she's, at, where she's supposed to be at, and she's not there. And I see this lady who's trying to sabotage all of our um, weapons and our, our ammo and stuff. And I yell to them, go get her. And I go and I grab this lady. I get a hold, grab this lady. She's about to blow everything up, all of our ammo, which would have blew up everything, the building, everything. They bring my wife in. And I'm asking her, and she's thinking that we're being cowards by hiding upstairs. And I'm telling her, it's like, look, you had the most vital job, the most important job. I said, your job was to protect. You were the gatekeeper to protect our wounded soldiers. You were the gatekeeper to protect our medical staff. These are our healers. Your job was to protect the leadership upstairs. They're the visionary. They're the eyes. They're the vision of what to do. How to make it happen. The mastermind behind it all. I said, had this blew up? Our better, our, our, the people that went out to protect us, to fight for us, our wounded soldiers, they would have died. All of our healers would have died. All of our leaders would have died. Everybody on the battlefield would have given up and they would have died as well. You had the most important job. It didn't look like it. And I understand that. I said, but had this lady who was watching you, the enemy was watching you. And as soon as you left your post, because you thought your post, you thought it was for everything was okay and nobody needed to do this job, you allowed the enemy to come in and go to the exact spot where you were supposed to be at. And had we not caught it, everybody here would have died, including yourself. I'm talking about purpose. I'm talking about standing in your lane. I'm talking about understanding your role. We won that battle. And the next day, everybody was congratulating us, you know, for a well fought battle, great plan, and whoop de whoop. We didn't have that many casualties, and we won that battle. And I was explaining to her, I was like, man, that, that, that was critical. People don't realize how close that was. Family, we have to humble ourselves. Everyone has a designated role. Everyone has a designated purpose. You don't realize how important you are. Stay in your lane.